America had been caught unprepared. These attacks came when there were few Army Air Corps bombers in the Pacific capable of hurting the aggressive Japanese. Well, everybody, everybody was eager to get in and do their part. I mean, it was just unbelievable emotions and, and the teachers and the women. They took, went out and got jobs out in the uh, factories and so forth. Where they, uh, Rosie the Riveter and all these people got jobs and worked. And the whole, the whole world, the country got together behind it. Uh, the railroad men, the, the, every, every, every branch. And, and the young men all, of course, 18, 17, 18 years old, started right to get into their branches as the service. And those that didn't got drafted. They, they had a draft thing that was set up. How they set the program up so fast is just amazing because everything was there behind them. It worked out just unbelievable. They need you down at the factory. So she gave up her nylons for coveralls and gloves and put her heart in the change it all started a movement when she overcame her fears america would never be the same america would never be the same It's, uh, it's a thrill for me to come in here and do this, see this now, and it's hard to visualize the things that we did when we were young. Uh, uh, it's, it's a complete transformation, I mean, that I can't hardly believe that I did all these things, and yet it was a job at the time. <laughs> I climbed aboard a B-25 was uh, in Greenville, South Carolina when we were getting our crew together for uh, overseas missions and we were learning to fly the B-25. Well, I had routine to check the compass and the, and the pilot had to check the engines to check them out and uh, they had regular routines and we always had to go through before we started uh, for takeoff. Be sure all instruments was working and normal and uh, I don't know if we went ahead, but when we first got our airplane to fly overseas, we had to test and swing the compass, and it was a brand new airplane. But that was after we'd had our training. I was in love with it from the first thing. I thought it was the most beautiful airplane I had ever seen, and the safest of any airplane I was flying. Right here is where I crawled through when I, when we got into the bombing range where I'd get into my uh, uh, flight for the uh, Northern bomb site. And as you get down through this hole, the Norden bomb site is set up, and there's a nice little chair that I sat in, and then I would take over the control of the pilot on the bomb run, where the uh, it's a navigator bombardier or a pilot to navigator bombardier, uh, it's all yours, and I would take over the flight. We're in the last uh, minutes of flight, and and get my uh, target and through the site and uh, drop the bombs. Hey, Jimmy, I see it. Pilot to bombardier. I was young, I had no fear of anything. I mean, I could, uh, even in the uh, all of the basic training and things, the obstacle course, I was in great physical shape uh, at the, in the Air Force. I was in the top 5% of, of uh, uh, activities that we went through all the time for all different things for the basic training. And uh, uh, I was in the best physical shape of my life at that time. Uh, when I came down into the area here, this is where I came down to run the Northern bomb site and be in charge of the front uh, machine gun. Uh, other times I was in the back section where I was doing my navigation, but when we came onto the bomb run into the target, I would come down through this little gully in here and crawl up under this chair and then operate here and take, on, take over the plane on the bomb run. Pilot to navigator, what's the word? Place gun, okay. Tail gun check. Billy turret getting set now. Mr. Gun, okay. Well, I, I'd flown in and, and 
many missions. Uh, when I first flew from Hawaii to our airplane, we flew, we got a new airplane in Savannah, Georgia, where we swung the compass and got it all set up and got our crew together and then we flew cross country to San Francisco. And there they took out the Bombay and put in gas tanks so we could make the first flight. The first flight to Hawaii in our warplane was 13 hours and five minutes. And uh, all the way over, we took off at two o'clock in the morning. It was pitch black. We had poached eggs of uh, egg stuff for breakfast. That was terrible. And uh, we got on the plane and took off. And here, the first time ever, I was flying at night with my uh, sextant to do celestial navigation across the ocean. Uh, I admit that it was a scary flight because you'd never done that before. One good thing, the Navy had two ships circling and one third of the way across and two thirds of the way across that I could take an actual fix from these plates and put in my, into my computer <coughs> and tell exactly where I was. So that if anything, we had to ditch or go down, we could report in where, where we were at. Yeah, many times on missions, your, your heart would be beating because you didn't know exactly what the target was and what the, how much flack you're gonna have or if there were gonna be any fighter opposition. I mean, uh, naturally there's the excitement that you have that, uh, that's scary. Yes, we had flak and many times, not uh, not really bad. Uh, I told you about the one plane next to me that got direct flak and got hit and went down. But uh, we'd usually fly in formation over the targets a lot of times and uh, occasionally one would get hit and the others didn't. I mean, I knew him. there was my uh, roommate, the navigator, who was, I had to pack his box up and send back to his family. Uh, uh, it was a, a sad time in life, but that was part of what war was all about. But our worst thing was uh, the rain. Every mission we went on, the missions were 650 miles long, uh, uh, back, to, back and forth, you know, to Kyushu, and, and always raining, cats and dogs everywhere you went. And it was just, an, uh, I think we feared more of the weather than we did actually of the flak and things in Japan. Well, this is the typhoon, too, that we had that wiped out everything, all our, our tents and everything in the war. 152 mile an hour wind wiped out our whole bases. Well, we were coming off a low level target and it was a heavy, heavy rain and clouds covered everything. And as we were taking the descent from after dropping our bombs and on our way out, uh, we had a plan because there's a mountain range, but we were a little off the area and we we're heading right into the clouds, right into a big mountain. And uh, we pa all panicked. The pilot immediately gave it full engine power and lifted it right up as straight as he could and banked off to the left. And God send, it was clear. And we come up out of the clouds and completely missed the mountains. Many planes were lost in the, in the war because of uh, air and, and hitting, hitting mountains or being off course.